It's time to start. This is the Trinet Deplatforming Ministry Continuity and Resiliency webinar. Thank you for joining this morning. Again, as you guys join, uh, please put in your, uh, your name and uh, where you're joining from so we can welcome you to this webinar. Uh, let's get started. Uh, the, we have a couple of people today, of course, yours truly. Uh, Ron Weber, Chief Operating Officer at Trinet Internet Solutions. And we also have uh, Greg Outlaw, who's a senior consultant at Trinet, but also CEO and co-founder of All About God. And we'll uh, have a chance to get to know Greg uh, later on as we have a Q&A session and he'll share his experiences. To begin with, I'll just tell you a little bit about Trinet, uh, established in 1995 a group of strategists and designers and developers and programmers. Uh, we're headquartered in Orange County, California, and we serve ministry clients, churches, parachurches, nonprofits. We also have a, a number of corporate clients as well. Uh, we've been blessed to work with Billy Graham, Focus on the Family, World Vision, It Is Written, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, and a number of other ministries, won over 100 awards in the last 10 years for the work that we've done for both ministries and, uh, and corporate clients. And what I'd like to do is play a short video, a testimonial from Barry McGuire, who is the founder of uh, uh, Revival Outside the Walls. And uh, you'll enjoy his testimony. He is just so full of energy. So let's just watch that right now. I'm Barry McGuire, the founder and the president of Revival Outside the Walls, built a global brand and another life of visionaries and passionate. We've always worked for the best thing we could possibly find to get us to where we're going to go. We're looking for around and who is the best thing that we can find to get us to where we're going to go. We're looking for around who is the best digital marketing company we could possibly work with. And wherever we went, we kept hearing the same trident. 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 You know, we're you know, now, now two, two years, years into this process, process and they're no longer a vendor. I mean, they're our they're friends, friends, our buddies. They're always plusing what, what we're saying. We're I, saying. Love I love the fact that while they are big, big and they have these great ideas, ideas they, they get it. it. I, mean, I mean, they fall they down, down in detail to do everything we want to do beyond what we want to do. It's great and easy to have big ideas, but they make them happen. You know, the hotspot for us, of course, is the whole digital world, all aspects of social media. Trinet's building a phone app for us that will blow you away. It is the most exciting digital phenomena I have ever seen. There's internet, TV, there's all aspects of new technology coming. And while we have great people in-house, it is the inexhaustible resources of Trinet that are going to make it possible for us to achieve our dreams. So if you have big dreams for your business, if you want to get new customers online, you want to tap into new technology, sure you can do a search yourself, but you can't do all of it. That's why you need Trinet. <laughs> Well, that's a great uh, testimonial video. You know, Barry McGuire just has so much energy. It's amazing. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, wanted to touch a little bit more on our services. In, uh, some of our services include deplatforming ministry resiliency, audio video streaming, content management systems, custom application development, e-commerce, email and mobile marketing. Uh, we also do online reputation management apps, live webcasts, search engine optimization, and marketing, uh, as well as web applications and web campaigns, development, hosting, maintenance, and strategy. So a few of the things that Trinet does. So let's move on to today's agenda, exciting agenda, uh, because it's such a relevant topic right now, particularly for ministries. And, and we're gonna cover what is deplatforming, what are forms of deplatforming, how can ministries prepare and mitigate risk, and then we're gonna, uh, finish up with a Q&A with Greg Outlaw. But before we get into that, uh, I wanna open us up with a scripture verse and a prayer. And uh, I've been reading out of Acts 4, verses 18 to 20, which says, 
Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. And that's, that's a great scripture verse in, in talking about deplatforming because we can't stop talking about the gospel. And we're going to talk about ways to keep talking about the gospel, even when people like the Sanhedrin or Google or Facebook tell us not to. <laughs> so let me open us in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for uh, bringing us together at this time in this place. Lord, we thank you for uh, technology that allows us to communicate the gospel message in new ways, Lord. And even as it becomes more uh, challenging to uh, get the gospel message out for in, in, on various platforms, Lord, you always provide other alternatives and you always provide us with wisdom and discernment as to how to go about doing it, even in the face of difficulty. And Lord, we thank you for that. And we, uh, we rise up to that challenge and we praise you and pray all these things in your son, Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Well, let's uh, just quickly discuss a, uh, the, what is the definition of, of deplatforming? Well, uh, you, could, you could describe it as the practice of preventing someone uh, holding views regarded as unacceptable by some people or offensive from contributing to a forum or debate, especially by blocking or removing them from a particular website or a particular technology platform. And uh, that's exactly what is happening to ministries. And so that's our topic for today. So what is, uh, so some other items related to that. Uh, and what we're seeing is that individuals and organizations are being deplatformed for holding Christian beliefs in particular. And that's occurring more and more frequently every single day. And so part of this webinar is to talk about that and how can we prepare for that? Uh, organizations that own or control the technology, the communications, and the financial processing platforms, which include companies like Facebook, Google, and Apple, and Amazon, even credit card processors and banks and many others, uh, domain name host providers, uh, they've all taken actions to censor, to ban, or in some cases to entirely remove ministries at a moment's notice off of platforms that they're on, which can completely incapacitate a ministry's ability to communicate and function effectively. Uh, so that's what's happening. We're seeing more and more of that every day. So what are some forms of deplatforming? Deplatforming is a very broad topic and, and uh, there's a variety of uh, manifestations of that. Everything from uh, censoring and or removal of posts from Facebook or completely being removed from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and other similar communications platforms. There's uh, the aspect of search engine downranking, uh, as well as shadow banning. We see a lot of that. There's domain name registry cancellation. There's website hosting discontinuance. There's email services discontinuance. Uh, there's CRM or customer relationship management software discontinuance, where people might be kicked out of, for example, Salesforce or other types of uh, customer relationship management software. There's the realm of credit card processing termination. We've seen some ministries have their credit card processing terminated. Uh, there's cancellation of banking services. There's other major and minor attacks that can functionally incapacitate a ministry overnight. So that's the realm of, of what we see happening. So um, one of the areas, so let's move on then. And so how can ministries prepare and mitigate risks associated with deplatforming? Well, uh, there's some measured steps that can be taken. There is planning there's assessment. And so we divide that into three areas. The first we call ministry digital and organizational deplatforming audit and assessment. So first off, you have to take a look at what you're doing and do an audit of that an assessment. What is the risk and what are the alternatives if and when 
a ministry gets deplatformed. So that's part one. Part two of that is then the broader realm of continuity and resiliency planning, where you start to look at, well, uh, if plan A doesn't work, how about plan B? What's plan If that doesn't work, what about plan C? So starting to put into, uh, into effect both short-term and long-term resiliency planning to make sure that uh, if and when deplatforming happens, it doesn't adversely affect the ability of a ministry to get the gospel message out. And then three is ongoing implementation and analysis. And it needs to be ongoing because the realm of deplatforming, it's changing constantly. And what might, what might work in one instance may no longer work later on. Uh, so it's, it's something that needs to be continually reviewed uh, in order to be effective. So some areas of audit assessment of planning, there's a whole stack that, uh, that, that's important to go through as a ministry. Uh, one would be uh, taking a look at, well, who's hosting the dom your domain? And what's the back, you know, what is the backup there if, if they choose to uh, terminate services? There's also the realm of content delivery network redundancy. And uh, we'll get a little bit more into that when, I, uh, when I, we talk to Greg and uh, he'll talk about some ways that that can be done. There's the realm of hosting. What about if you get, uh, as, as uh, uh, was found out earlier this year, uh, Amazon Web Services uh, deplatformed an entire platform. Uh, so that can happen. There's database hosting as well. How can there be redundancy in that? There's customer relationship management or CRM system redundancy and backup plans. There's email systems. There's search engine ranking or, or deranking, if, if you will. There's commerce systems that need to be looked at. There's financial tra uh, transaction processing. So how are donations being processed? And what happens if that processor decides to no longer uh, handle transactions? What's plan B? And then, of course, there's the social media platform presence, whether it's Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and, of course, Google as well, uh, and how uh, ranking goes on Google. So um, let's move on then. Uh, so there, we divide that into three phases. There's an initial phase of what we call initial high-level ministry technology and deplatform assessment and, and initial high-level recommendations. And these are some of the short-term things that can be done uh, after. And, and these are going to vary ministry by ministry. There's no silver bullet that, that's going to apply to everyone. Each ministry is going to be different in terms of their risk and in terms of the steps that could be, can be taken. Uh, so really have to do a, a, an, a, an audit and an assessment uh, of, uh, of that ministry's uh, platforms and then identify key ministry technology deplatforming risks, uh, identify some short-term and some long-term areas of high risk that may require more detailed auditing and al analysis. Then in phase two, uh, diving into the areas of high risk that perhaps are going to be uh, more complex or uh, require more work to be able to put together a plan to, uh, to mitigate some of the risk. And then phase three is then the uh, ongoing resiliency and ongoing uh, monthly retainer where that is looked at continually and reevaluated as technology and as culture and as laws change. So that needs to be continually uh, reassessed as that is being implemented. All right. Well, uh, next, um, I want to go into a QA. So I've given sort of set the stage with, well, what is deplatforming and uh, what are some of the areas that, uh, that are important in terms of deplatforming? And next, I want to uh, introduce Greg Outlaw. And, uh, you know, Greg Outlaw, I've known Greg Outlaw for uh, quite a while. He's, a, a, he's a, an excellent uh, 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 person. Personally, his test, if, if you ever get a chance to hear his testimony, you have to hear his testimony. Uh, what can I say about Greg? Well, he's, a, he's an SEO expert. He, he's, uh, he works with Trinet. He also is the CEO and co-founder of All About God Ministries, which is an all-digital ministry that's focused on, on reaching people uh, with the gospel message as they're doing Google searches on keywords and topics that ultimately lead to the presentation of a gospel message. So we're talking 100% uh, digital evangelism using SEO. 
uh, and it, it solely, so he solely uses SEO as well as social media optimization, uh, video search engine optimization to drive surgically targeted traffic. Uh, and Greg's created what's, what, what he's called a, a vortal. Um, I don't know if he uh, dubbed the word, but uh, I love the word vortal of topics, content, and landing pages, which are all strategically designed to gain Google search engine ranking. And through uh, God's blessing, allaboutgod.com has reached more than 430 million visitors through the uh, All About God network of websites. Uh, through December 2019. I'm sure that number is much higher now. And But the key point here is that God has blessed Greg because in doing all of this work, uh, in other words, in, 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 in terms of putting together the portal and the content and, and the SEO and really successfully driving traffic primarily using organic SEO, Greg, as a byproduct, Greg has become one of the foremost experts in the world on search engine ranking, uh, both in the ministry and in the corporate space. So it's just a pleasure to have Greg join us uh, this morning. So I guess, um, Greg, I've, I've touched a little bit, I've, I've, I've uh, painted a little bit of a picture of, uh, of your background and, and your ministry. Um, can you, uh, perhaps you can, you can fill in the blanks on, on some context on both your qualifications and, and background on deplatforming before we, uh, and then perhaps in that share some ways that your ministry has been uh, affected by deplatforming. So Greg, I'm gonna deplatform and I'm gonna give you the platform. <laughs> That's good, Ron, thanks so much. So, uh, well, let me go way back. So I've been online since 1980 because my dad ran a time sharing and programming company. So my first computer was when I was 14 an Apple II plus with a modem in it. And I had access to what was then the ARPANET because my dad had access to what became the NSF net. Anyway, that's what actually morphs into the internet later. And with the creation of the World Wide Web by Tim, Tim Berners-Lee and it becoming actually commercially available, I studied and I watched it start decentralized and slowly over time now, it's become centralized into monopolies like we have today. My wife and brother-in-law and I launched one of the first 10,000 commercial websites online. And to give you a hint of, of how impressive that is, if you were to go that far back today, we see 10,000 commercial websites come online every six hours. So that, that's, uh, it's really growing fast. We acted as our own ISP and managed all the servers in-house. So we got intimately acquainted with all the hardware and how to do those things. I was one of three people that um, uh, started doing what became known as SEO in 1995. That's two years before the term search engine optimization was coined. And it gave us a huge competitive advantage um, because our dot-com became a going concern. It was on a fast track to an IPO, which was shelf with the bursting of the dot-com bubble. I rededicated my life to Christ on December 7th of 1999 when, and was miraculously healed of a terminal illness in 2002 and given a vision for what would become allaboutgod.com. Basically, the Lord showed me that what I was doing in the secular world was really meant for him and to lead people to faith in Christ using search engine optimization. Uh, so as Ron mentioned, we primarily use SEO as our means to reach the world for Christ. And we've seen out of all those visitors, 374 million gospel presentations and over 3 million people indicate decisions for Christ since 2002. And then we connect those people to churches all across the world. So that's kind of my background. Excellent, excellent. And um, as, as, as time has gone on, uh, you know, there's, the, there's this realm now of, of deplatforming. And so can you perhaps share some of the ways in which, um, you know, All About God has been affected. Uh, All About God hasn't been deplatformed, but it, it certainly has been affected um, you know, in, 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 in the Google realm. Uh, so maybe can you talk a little bit about that and, uh, and, and your experiences in that? Sure. So in our case, um, deplatforming did take the form of down ranking or deranking in Google primarily. And most people think that this is just a recent issue, but we've dealt with this for over a decade. Uh, and, and we have over 20,000 
pages in 14 languages spanning over 50 websites. So we do quite a work in this area, um, quite a lot of work, as well as, uh, of course, consulting with Trinet, uh, helping other large ministries um, deal with these, these issues. But we basically went from 3 million gospel presentations per month and 1,000 decisions for Christ per day to one-tenth that. Mm. So quite a, a huge drop, a uh, little over 90% of our traffic from, from SEO uh, disappeared uh, starting in June 2019. And the, the thing that, that's interesting about it is it's not just us. Over 70 well-known Christian websites have lost over 44.8% of their organic traffic from Google since June of 2019. In fact, I wrote a white paper detailing that information at the request of Senator Josh Hawley. In fact, Trinet, uh, especially Ron and the CEO, John Carley, actually helped with that nine page document. And I'm sure we can make it available to you if you're interested. But clearly this shifted my attention into the larger problem after seeing numerous conservatives being deplatformed and now Christians and uh, been helping those those ministries get back on their feet and discover new means for driving traffic. Super. And, and so, uh, can you, Greg? Could you uh, touch on some of the steps that um, that perhaps you've taken at all about uh, all about God, and maybe others that that uh, has ha ways to be able to. Um, perhaps not, not completely mitigate this, but there are some steps that can be taken to uh, perhaps prevent it from uh, getting worse or, or perhaps even improving it. So perhaps you could share some steps that you've taken to address uh, deranking and then just, you know, deplatforming in general. Sure. Um, well, with, with the deplatforming of Parler um, from Amazon, Apple, and Google all in one day, we recognized we had no choice but to evaluate the entire tech stack of the internet. And that's from the top of the platforms like YouTube, Google, and Facebook, all the way down to the physical network of the internet, the data center, the hosting providers, the fiber optics, uh, all the way down and everywhere in between that. Uh, and to answer the specific question, we had to build resilience throughout the entire tech stack uh, from, so for instance, from hosting. So we have backup hosts and we have live hosts and we actually don't host a lot of things centralized. We push it to the edges. We push static content to the edges on using CDNs. That's a content delivery network. Um, and we have multiple CDNs. We actually layer CDNs. So if, if let's say Cloudflare decided to deplatform us, well, we would have a secondary and a tertiary CDN that would kick in. So it would be difficult just to get rid of us overnight. And after seeing what Parler did, basically they never really came back. They lost all their traffic, they lost their CEO, they're back online now, but they have lost most of their business momentum. And so that was one thing. The other thing is that we, um, realize that that if we can't use the best CDNs like Cloudflare or maybe Amazon Web Services or Google, then we're also going to have to tighten the speed of our websites and all of our assets. And so really this kind of comes into conversion rate optimization. So we started working on that because if it takes longer to deliver it through a secondary or tertiary CDN, then we want to make sure that it's still a good experience for the end user, no matter where they are in the world. Excellent. And uh, so maybe can you walk our audience uh, perhaps through some, what are some of the phases? So let's say I have a ministry and um, I'm concerned about deplatforming. Um, if, if you were to to step in and 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 uh, uh, and do an assessment on a, on a ministry. Maybe can you walk through what would the different steps be uh, of of what you would do the the assessment and then recommendations and implementations ongoing. What maybe uh, share a little bit of what might happen uh, or how you would approach that in in each step and maybe some of the risk and rewards as well. 
Sure. So in, in phase one, we would look at the entire tech stack of an organization, right? And specifically as in the services, the hardware, the software, everything that you're using, as well as policies. You know, what's your, what's your ministry or business policy for certain things? Um, then we would also assign some level of risk to each layer, like in a spreadsheet and say, you know, this is pretty low risk. This is something we can address later. The idea is to surface basically two or three areas of high risk to investigate more deeply. So that would kind of be phase one in a nutshell. And then in, in phase two, we would do a, a detailed audit and assessment of those two or three areas of high risk and provide an initial ministry resilient and continuity plan. This is a, would be at a high level uh, basically of steps you should take and what you should do. And then we'd work with your tech team to actually make sure you implemented those in a way that they have immediate failover or if not immediate, very close to immediate failover. So that redundancy, basically you don't, you don't miss uh, anything or any traffic or any opportunity you continue um, doing what you're called to do. In phase three, the idea is to keep you informed in this ever changing arena and make sure really you have updates to your plan as well as uh, quarterly Zoom calls in a sort of a summit round table so that you can hear from other like-minded organizations. We found that that's hugely beneficial in the ministries that we've worked with uh, in the past. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't give you examples of that. I have um, non-disclosure agreements for those ministries, but believe me, you've heard of some of them. Uh, yeah, that's it. Very good. And then I guess looking into the future, how do you see deplatforming of Christian ministries playing out in the future? Is, is this just a, a temporary thing? Is it here to stay? Is it going to get worse? Uh, what do you, how do you see the future of ministry in the digital realm changing as, as we move forward? Well, I would say that in the, in the future, here's what I can guarantee. We're, we're all eventually going to suffer deep platforming, at least at some level. If you are focused with a conservative message, your, your doctrinal, um, your, your doctrinally orthodox Google, Facebook, and others are not going to tolerate you dealing with the great commission and the great commandment. So it's inevitable in my view. And if you knew what I knew you and, and worked with those that I've already worked with, you would already be working on this problem because really we need to be, we have to be proactive in this arena. If you don't have a plan, I mean, talk about a disaster. It could look like parlor and we don't want any ministries looking like parlor and what happened to them. So really this is kind of a, a disaster recovery plan. It kind of augments that. Uh, so that you can have ministry continuity at the end of the day and continue to do exactly what God has called you to do. Excellent. And before I go on to my last question, I see a, there's a question posted in the chat. Angie asks, is Google deranking something that really only affects large ministries or should small ministries be concerned as well? Um, what, what are your thoughts on that, Greg? So I guess it depends on the question. If I, I would say that, that basically any ministry that's faithful to the Bible and espouses uh, conservative doctrine, you will face it. It's, it's, it's not because Google is targeting you specifically because you're focused on the family, right? It's not mm -hmm. or billygram.org. It's not because of that. It's an algorithm. It's an artificial intelligence that's deciding that your content is inappropriate, that you're a hater. And, and I, I have an acronym for hate. I call hate a hostile anti-truth environment. And that is the environment of Google. So yes, small ministries, large ministries alike, we will all have that problem if you haven't already. And I'm willing to bet that if you're really to go deep into your analytics, whether it's Google, Facebook, or some other platform, you'll actually find that you already have, have been downranked, that you're already missing traffic, losing traffic, and therefore conversions. Mm. Good, good, thanks. And uh, let's see, if there's any other questions from the audience, um, please go ahead and post your questions. Um, 
And uh, let's see. So this is this uh, deep platforming is is something that's really Greg. That's really become a uh, um, really come. To, it's been about the last two years. Would you say it started about 2019 when when it really started? Uh, you really started noticing this. Is that right? That's when it became yeah very obvious, right? The seventy the seventy different websites that that many of which you've heard of and you know exactly who they are that have lost so much traffic specifically on Google. And again, it's not just Google. I have one hundred thirty thousand followers on Facebook, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm blessed if I reach you know five hundred with a typical post. I'm being shadow banned there. And shadow banning is not a conspiracy theory. They're guaranteed scholarly documents that prove it exists. Cindy asks the question, are there certain words or phrases that are more likely to cause problems with Google, Facebook, or YouTube content? Um, thoughts on that, Greg? Sure, because Google is is if you look at what's called the Google uh, the Google guidelines, let's just shorten it. Basically, the Google guidelines is a 127 page document that Google hands to 10,000 contractors um, that basically are being paid $15 an hour, and I would say hardly any of those people are conservative or or believers. Uh, you usually hire like minded people when you're hiring even contractors. And things like if you, it says specifically in those guidelines that if you um, dissent from what, what is the primary scientific consensus on an issue, like for instance, you believe in creation versus evolution, you're gonna have a problem. So if you're talking about creation ministry, you're gonna have a problem. If you have a problem and you talk about abortion, or homosexuality or transgenderism or anything that we would label as sin in order to share the gospel, right? You're going to have a problem. If you pigeonhole people, in other words, if you just do demographic work and you say baby boomers believe this and you paint with a broad stroke, that's going to have problems with ranking if you have a conservative view of what you're espousing that baby boomer to believe. So it's not just simply the keywords, it's also the phrases and the content. Remember, there's there's artificial intelligence that's actually looking at your information. Because if it was just a keyword issue, well, it would be easy to choose other keywords that could convey kind of the same message. It's not. Um, and when, when it was that way, they started using semantic phrases, phrases that were similar or carried the same meaning. But now we're at the place with artificial intelligence it's actually reading, digesting, understanding your content and dealing at it from that level. So it's a big problem. And I guess in, in the last year with lockdowns and, 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 uh, and, and all the COVID stuff, um, it seems medical, anything in the medical realm is also uh, targeted uh, unless you've got a, a lot of papers that you've written or <laughs> you have a PhD or something like that. And even then, <laughs> so we see that as well. Um, another question, Rosa asks, is there any federal legislation that can be used to protect ministries from de being deplatformed? I, it's my first reaction is the first amendment, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I know you, you did some work with, with, uh, Senator Josh Hawley, and I, I know you're not a, a lawyer or anything like that. Do you know of any any uh, work that's being done to uh, protect ministries from from being being deplatformed? I, I I don't know of any off the top of my head, but perhaps you might have some comments on that. No, but another person that weighed in on that document was uh, was Craig Parsons, who's an attorney, and he was with the NRB and uh, several other uh, different things, and. He was working in this area for a long time, and he's still trying the legal route. The problem is, is if you're in a corrupt government and they are in collusion with big tech, and I have proof that they are, because the government can say, deplatform this conservative, and it happens on Twitter, it happens on Facebook. Um, when, when you have that kind of that uh, that that issue then really we're in, a, we're in a state of lawlessness, right? We're in an in a age of deceit where those things don't work anymore. So we have to go to an extreme. 
Um, and, and I think that extreme is becoming more resilient. That's, that's our best position that we can take at this point. Hmm. Uh, Cynthia asks the question, we're a small ministry, so we don't have the staff or budget to build much redundance or resiliency. Is there anything we can do to mitigate our risk? Um, thoughts on that? Sure. Well, just to give you an idea, our ministry is extremely small. Just because we have a large, impactful outreach doesn't mean we have a lot of people. Um, no one is paid in our ministry, and that includes me. Uh, I am a volunteer. Uh, I work through my company, and I get paid for deliverables, and everyone that works with us gets paid for deliverables. So, so we're doing this... Um, you know, basically on a shoestring budget. I think our entire budget last year was uh, less than $400,000. So that's a small ministry. So if we can do it, you can do it. And we can provide ways to do it, uh, you know, uh, cost effectively and, and identify those. So yes, we can work with small and large. And there are many things to do to mitigate risk, some that cost nothing at all. Um, I got another question in via email from Alberto, who says, do you see a time in the future when Christian ministries will be completely banned from Google, Facebook, and YouTube? And how could ministries continue to function in that digital environment? That's a great question. It is a good question. So what I see in the future is a digital exodus, ultimately. Uh, if we're not deplatformed, the only ones that will actually be there are those that compromise and become liberal in their views. Those are allowed to rank, but I think ultimately we will all be deplatformed. And what I'm encouraging pastors to do, there's over 100,000 churches in the United States. If you think about if 10,000 pastors that had, you know, say 200 people each in their congregations on average, were to stand up and say, I'm no longer going to live stream to Facebook and YouTube because they're censoring me, they're shadow banning me, or they threatened me or put me in Facebook jail. And they start doing it on Gab and use another alternative video platform like tv.gab.com. And they tell all of their people to go there for the message. It will make a big difference right? We will get their attention. So that's one way to address that issue. Now, once we have a firm foundation, then we could go back into there like missionaries, like a digital missionary, and try to do outreach into Facebook and Google. But we wouldn't have to worry about, hey, I've got, you know, all this investment and effort in here, and I'm just basically going to lose it unless I compromise. We can't compromise. Good answer. Good answer. Well, that's, um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, that's, and, and Greg, I, I appreciate your, uh, your time. I, I guess I have one final question and that is, Greg, if you could convey uh, one key concept that ministry attendees to this webinar could walk away from uh, as they leave the webinar, what, what would that be if you could convey one key concept? Well, since we just talked to a small ministry, I, I'll make it, make it simple so that you can, you can start implementing this today as soon as you draft up a new policy statement. So I'll give you two of them. One, you don't rely on anything that is Google. Uh, and you would start with Gmail, right? If you're using Gmail, and you were to lose those credentials. In other words, they're revoked. You don't have access to your Gmail. You don't have access to anything that you signed up with in Gmail or Facebook. So, you know, those software as a service site or plat platforms as a service sites, you know, CRMs like Salesforce, things like that. If you sign up with those Gmail credentials or Facebook credentials and those credentials are revoked, you've lost access to everything you sign up to. So as a policy, you would, you would change your business policy or your ministry policy starting today saying anyone that's signed up for that needs to go back after we get, you know, Proton Mail or some other mail, mail thing. And you can still use your domain names with Proton Mail, um, but you're not going to be deplatformed from them. And then you go back in there and then you fix all of those signups with those uh, SaaS sites, software as a service site or the, the, the 
platform as a service sites. That's one thing you could do today. Good. Uh, I saw one question that came in uh, just a moment ago from Pete. And his question was, what's your sense of how many of those 100,000 churches would be aligned with a biblical Christian view? That's a good yeah. question. That, that, so I, I see it as a remnant. So that's why I said 10,000, <laughs> one tenth, a tithe of all, all the ones that are out there. I, I think if we got that many, that would be a huge blessing. I don't know that there, there's that many that exist. I think it's a lot fewer than we think. But um, you know what? God doesn't need much. It's not our battle. It's his. And as long as we have our ear and we're submitted and yielded to his Holy Spirit, he's going to guide us in this area. In fact, he's guided me, he's guided other ministries, and we would just like to help you and guide you out of that and into the promised land where you can continue to do exactly what you're called to do. Excellent. Uh, I think we're, uh, we've answered all the questions. I haven't seen any others come in. So let's wrap up our webinar and, and uh, if we could go to the next uh, slide. Uh, so if you're if you're concerned about your ministry deplatforming and doors closing, uh, we can help you to open some new digital doors. Uh, we have a special Trinet webinar offer. There's a 30-minute free ministry deplatforming consultation. I'd be happy to, um, uh, to help you with that. You can contact me at Trinet. My contact information uh, is there, phone, email, and LinkedIn. And uh, also, I would encourage you uh, to go to our website, uh, we have, uh, there's more webinars available, and there's the link, trinetsolutions.com, Thought Leadership. We're always publishing new uh, webinars. Uh, I did see one question come in from Bobby. Uh, the question is, I know you are primarily talking about deplatforming with respect to the digital platform, how, or but do you know how this affects radio-based AM and FM ministries. Um, any thoughts on that, Greg? Sure. So um, I can't remember the name of the company. So, so when I think in the realm of, say, NRB, right, most of those AM and FM ministries or, or radio-based ministries um, they're on they're on a platform of sorts that is a digital platform because usually they're combining uh, the standard analog outreach right or digital outreach uh, through the airwaves with um, with basically streaming. So those two are are interconnected in my view, which means that if we haven't seen and and I don't know of any that that I know of personally that have 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 had have been deplatformed. Um, we will see it. It's only a matter of time. As more and more of this becomes digital and online, uh, it's inevitable. I'll give you an example. There is, I'm in New Mexico. There is a local television station and um, it, it carries Christian content. It's Christian owned, but they, and I won't give the name uh, just to protect protect them, they specifically were threatened because the things that they were talking about, um, they were threatened by the cancel culture that they would pull certain advertising, pull certain things, and it kind of forced them to conform and basically censor themselves. So yes, in my mind, it's, it's inevitable that it crosses over into radio if it has, has not already. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for those thoughts, Greg. And thanks. Uh, for all of those that have uh, asked questions, we appreciate that. Uh, this webinar is was recorded, and you can, uh, after the webinar is completed, you'll uh, get an email that will give you access to it, so you can watch it again and share it with your friends as well. Oh, one more question. Uh, Pete asks, are there podcast services that aren't as vulnerable? Are there podcast services that aren't as vulnerable? Any thoughts on that, Greg? Yes, there are, but they're just coming up. So they're brand new and they use things like what's called Sphinx chat. And, and, and one of the big areas is basically demonetization by say PayPal or Patreon in that area primarily. 
uh, that's where it's a, it's, you know, if, if you're not getting some kind of donation, it could be hard to do a podcast ongoing because it costs money uh, just to do all the production work. So if you have, you know, kind of the logistics being cut off in that arena, then you have to address that. And so Adam Curry, who was, um, he was actually an MTV DJ back, I think in the eighties, but he and John Dvorak, uh, which has been around, he's been around for, you know, he's older than I am. He's in his, he's in his sixties or he might be close to 70, but brilliant guys. And they have a, a podcast called No Agenda. Well, they were actually being censored and they're not Christians. Don't get me wrong. They are conservatives, but they're not Christians. Um, but they actually are creating a podcast service called Podcast Index that also works with their podcast client called Breeze. And they're using what's called the Lightning Network um, and basically taking Bitcoin uh, and other cryptocurrencies to fund that as as kind of the extreme alternative and there are more podcasting services that are coming up uh every day but it's it's pretty new it's i wouldn't recommend just jumping on it but it's a good place to investigate for you know say a tertiary response in your resilience plan uh to podcasting i don't have a secondary one yet so i guess until then it serves as the secondary response to your main you know, Apple, Apple or Google or something like that. Excellent. Thanks, Pete, for that question. Well, um, Greg, uh, would you like to close us out in prayer? Sure, I would. Well, Father, thank you so much for all of these wonderful questions. These people are so astute. And why wouldn't I expect them to be? They are filled with your spirit, God. I pray your richest blessing and your protection over them. I pray that they would continue to be able to do the great commission and the great commandment to occupy until you return, Lord. Help them, bless them, encourage them. And Lord, let them know that if you are for them, who can be against them, that they are more than conquerors because you loved them. And we love you. We ask all these things, believing in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks, Greg. And thanks for everyone who attended. Again, we'll send out an email with a link. Uh, there's information uh, how to reach Trinet. Uh, and uh, also check out our other webcast uh, webinars as well on our website. Thanks again, everyone. This has been the Trinet ministry deplatforming and continuity webinar. Thanks. Bye for now.